Jesus' verses when he says, like, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Yeah. Why is he telling you to eat my flesh, drink my blood? Because in the Old Testament, in the law, like, he, uh, God said not to consume blood. Jesus, it's demonic to say to eat my flesh and drink my blood. main issue with regard to Christianity and Islam is who is Jesus' flesh and blood was punished instead of our flesh and blood. And therefore, because if the Quran says the Bible's corrupt, then the Quran... Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching for. I'm so glad to have you all here. So thank you so much for clicking. Muslim students asked tough questions and got an epic response. So let's check it out. Yes, sir. Um... It's funny you mentioned Allah because um, my question has to do with uh, Islam. So yes, what's I, your name? Uh, my name? My name is Sam, also known as the Din and the Non, Triple Triple the Don. You know, get, <laughs> okay, don't name you know how I mean, I'm a rapper. You know, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. I'm also a Christian though. But um, okay. so I I have a friend mm -hmm. who's also also a rapper, uh, okay. but he's a Muslim. Uh huh. And um, he was he was debating me about um, Jesus' verses when he says like, "Eat my flesh, drink my blood." Yeah. And you know I'm not a Catholic. I'm a Protestant. I don't I don't right. believe that he's speaking literally there. You right. Know? Okay. So and that caused another argument with the Catholic. But anyway. So um, with that being said, um, he was like, okay, but even if these are metaphors, they're demonic metaphors. Why is he telling you to eat my flesh, drink my blood? And I know there's a good answer for that. And I think you probably have a better answer than me. So what would you say if I said? Jesus, it's demonic to say to eat my flesh and drink my blood metaphor. Mm. Okay. Hey everyone, diving right in, we've got Sam grappling with a tough question about Jesus' words, eat my flesh, mm. drink my blood. Yeah. Sounds intense, right? But hold up, it's not what you think. Jesus isn't going all demonic on us. He's using a metaphor Death to show Christ. the depth of his sacrifice. And about the Bible being corrupted, that's a big nope. The Quran itself tells us to believe in the Bible, so why would it point to a faulty book? Stick around as we debunk these misconceptions and get to the heart of what Jesus really meant. Let's roll. Okay, first of all, I would ask him, what does he mean by demonic and why does he think it's demonic? Because if it means that Jesus' flesh and blood was punished instead of mm. our flesh and blood, and therefore we can be forgiven and given his righteousness, how is that demonic? I mean, God is the one taking the punishment. And Jesus is voluntarily taking it. Mm -hmm. You remember when Jesus says, hey, Lord, if there's another way that this yeah. cup can pass from me, please. But not my will, your will. No, there's no other way. Okay, I'll do it. His reasoning was because in the Old Testament, in the law, like... He, uh, God said not to consume blood. So he's like, why would he say not to consume blood in the Old Testament, but then in the New, then in the New Testament say consume blood? All right, let's tackle this head on. So your Muslim buddy's got you in a bit of a twist, huh? He's asking why Jesus is talking about eating flesh and drinking blood when um, back in the Old Testament, God's pretty clear about not munching on blood. I get it. It sounds kind of out there, but here's the thing. Jesus isn't setting up a barbecue here. He's laying down a metaphor. See, when Jesus says, my eat blood. my flesh and drink my blood, he's not handing out mm. a literal snack. He's talking about something Future. deeper, something spiritual. It's like when you say, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Yeah, you're never. not actually going to chow down on Mr. Ed, right? Edifle. It's just a way to say you're really hungry. Jesus is doing the same thing. He's using vivid language to show how serious and important his sacrifice is. And let's not forget that Jesus often spoke in yeah. metaphors and parables to convey deeper spiritual truths. He used everyday language and imagery to help people understand complex concepts. So it's not surprising that he used this metaphor to illustrate the profound sacrifice he was about to make for our salvation. Now about the whole demonic angle, nah, that's way off base. If Jesus wanted to go all dark and demonic, he could have used actual blood like those mm. shady rituals do. But there's none of that at the Last Supper. No blood, no horror show, just bread and wine and a message that's all about liberation mm. and victory. It's like the Passover feast, celebrating freedom from slavery. And now Jesus is saying he's going to set us free from death itself by taking the hit for our sins. So, bottom line, Jesus is using strong words to make a point, not to start a cult. And those verses about not eating blood in the Old Testament, they're mm -hmm. about respecting life. Because life's in the blood, right? But Jesus, he's offering a new kind of life a spiritual one that comes from believing in what he's about to do. 
That's the real meat of the message, no pun intended. We'd have to see what passages he's talking about. Mm. But look, all of that is really not the main issue. The main issue with regard to Christianity and Islam mm. is who is Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Now the only people among scholars who say Jesus wasn't crucified yeah. are the Muslims. The Christians believe he was crucified, the Jews believe he was crucified, the agnostics believe he was crucified, the atheists believe he was crucified. Only the Muslims say no. Why? Their Quran, Surah 4, verse 157, which is written 600 years after the events, tells them that Jesus was taken straight to heaven. Yeah, he wasn't crucified. That's what they yes. said. Yeah. And, and, and was someone else substituted for Jesus, they think. Now, why would we believe a document that comes 600 years after the events rather than documents written by eyewitnesses who were there who all say Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead? So, if you look at Jesus, and as you probably know, in the Quran, Jesus is actually considered virgin-born. He's considered a prophet. He's Just not yeah. the yeah. judge. Right, yeah. yeah. Why, but why would, we, why would we believe the Quran on this when we have eyewitness accounts from the time? And they're going to say, well, it's been corrupted. Well, what evidence do you have it's been corrupted? Because by, by the time you get to Muhammad's time, we know what the Bible said. And yet, Muhammad himself, or let me put it another way, the Quran in, in Surah 5, verse 68, tells the Christians and the Jews to obey the law, the prophets, and the Gospels. Why would the Quran tell the Christians and the Jews to believe a corrupted book. This is, this is called the Quranic dilemma, by the way. Because if the Quran says the Bible's corrupt, and it is corrupt, then the Quran is still not the Word of God because it's telling us to obey a corrupt book. If the, if the New Testament documents are not corrupt, the Quran is still not the Word of God because... The Quran disagrees with the true New Testament. So no matter how they slice it, the Quran is not the word of God. That's called the Quranic Dilemma, and the best place to see that played out is on David Wood's website, which is called Apologetics Roadshow. So just, just look up David Wood, and uh, he has a very succinct video on that YouTube channel called The Quranic Dilemma. All right? Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sam. So, this uh, student came to ask a question on behalf of his Muslim friend. And they were having a conversation based on the fact that Jesus said, it's my body, it's my blood. And, you know, that's what Christians call Holy Communion. And he was asking that, how will he explain to his Muslim friend what Jesus meant by, it's my body, it's my blood. And, you know, definitely Jesus did not mean physical body, physical blood. You know, you're trying to commune with God. Even when he was giving his disciples the Holy Communion, he never killed any ram. He didn't make any sacrifice. He gave them wine and gave them bread. And that would signify his body and his blood. So, I just love everything the man said. It's just like, for instance, you're saying that, ah, I am so hungry that I want to eat a mountain. Is it possible for you to eat a mountain? No, it's not possible. So it's a metaphor. When you take the bread and the wine, you know, you'll be renewed. You know, all your sins will be forgiven and, you know, that, that's what it signifies. So I just love how the man spoke about it. And there's one thing Frank said. He said that, you know, Muslims don't actually believe that the Bible is the word of God because they believe it's a contradiction. I'm just trying to say that for the Quran to say that the Bible is contradicting itself, the Bible is not the real word of God, that then the Quran that is telling us to believe that the Bible is not the real word of God or a contradiction, that means the Quran too is also such. So he's just trying to explain to us that there are some things that Jesus will say. He doesn't necessarily say you should do it. He's just trying to you know, explain it in another form. It's just like a proverb. It's just like a metaphor. He's not telling that you're taking his body, you're taking his blood. No. He's just trying to let you understand that, you know, since he has gone on the cross of Calvary to die for mankind's sin, the sin of mankind, so whenever you take the bread and the wine, which signify the body and the blood, then you'll be renewed. Everything about you will be renewed. So, that was a beautiful one, and I love how 
the whole conversation and that, that was a beautiful let me know your thoughts what do you think about this topic and what do you have to say about it let me know and uh, let's keep this discussion going i'll see you guys in the next one bye